Hey, this is Ty Wilman, and you're listening to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. Want to know what's going on in the world of music? Then tune in to the Nothing Shocking Podcast, a non-genre-based, all-ages friendly rock and roll program. Join us weekly for interviews with all your favorite rock stars from the mainstream to the underground. You can find us at nothingshocking.libsyn.com or anywhere you download podcasts. We're putting the band back together. The numbers all go to 11. I'm talking about bands that rock. Led Zeppelin. What about Sabbath? ACDC. Motorhead. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. I get up above the ground and raise my head days like this. Think I should be dead. One for Satan, two for me. Let's cheat the devil in. Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeff Antiet, and with me in Dog Bowl Studios is... Coach Nez. You can find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Lipson or any podcatchers. Like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at No Shock Pod. You can also find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Rock Rage Radio every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Central Time. Our sponsor is Ragged Records, located in downtown Rock Island, Illinois, and downtown Davenport, Iowa. We'd like to thank the Hong Kong Sleepover for allowing us to use their music for our intro and bumper ending. Tonight's guest is... Ty Wilman from Green Apple Quick Step. Uh, he uh, had wonderful virus and reloaded back in the 90s. And they, uh, we, one of the things I discovered on this uh, interview was he had a band called the uh, Hula Bees. And uh, they have a band camp page. Uh, they got a couple songs out there you can check, out, check them out. Cool. And... Uh, Green Apple Quick Step was a big influence on you back in the day, correct? Oh yeah, it was, you know came out of that gr- Seattle uh, you know gun scene, and uh, you know they worked with uh, Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam back in the day, yep. and uh, that's that's kind of how, how I lanced onto him. So hey, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to that interview. All right, good night. Good night. Hi, welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'd like to introduce to you my co-host, Jeff Unteed. Ty, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, hey thank you for having me. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you for all the correspondence. We're excited to have you tonight. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to, uh, to do this. All right. Well, COVID-19 restrictions have hampered the music industry for the past two years. We're now seeing uh, life again. Um, how did you keep yourself busy during the COVID pandemic? That's a good question. Um <clears throat> At the time, I was living in Gig Harbor, Washington, and uh, I had a little studio set up. And my dad is a musician as well, and he actually, um, you know, he did like five songs, and we recorded them. Mm. And uh, we made a little EP out of it. It's called Lawson. It's L-A-W-S-U-N. Uh, that's my dad's name, Larry Allen Wilman, hmm. and then son would be me. But there's periods after each, like L dot A dot W. Gotcha. Son. So, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, very cool. That, that, yeah, it's a cool little record. Oh, very cool. Well, um, I guess let's kind of move over to uh, Green Apple Quick Step. Uh, yeah is the is the band is the band actually active right now? I know that when I did some research on it, um, you guys are still playing live shows. Uh, yeah, we we like to do that. Uh, we we've done it a couple of them. Uh, it's one of those things where you like get back together with the old boys and girls, yeah. Marianne. Mm-hmm. Um, so Marianne has a, s- a shoulder issue, so. It's, She's having some trouble with that, so we're trying to figure it out. 
Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, let's kind of yeah. talk about the origins of Green Apple Quick Step. Established in 1992, which lasted until 1998 when you guys first broke up, and then before you got back together, you brought back the uh, the band in 2009. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the origins of the band? Um, God, it was kind of spawned out of a uh, Inspector Love and the Ride Me Babies. Yeah, uh, but yeah, um, but we. I don't know. It was a weird time, but we we got Marianne on bass and vocals, and it kind of we kind of went in a different direction. I know Dan and Steve, who are in the briefs, by the way, mm-hmm. big X fans. So we were kind of like going in that direction a little bit. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I mean, I know that, that you know part of the you know we live in the Midwest, and so you know part of the cult following of. You know, discovering Green Apple Quick Step was you know linked to Pearl Jam, and when they were uh, their first show with like Mookie Blaylock as the name, did they open for you guys? No, okay. We opened for them. Oh, gotcha. And it was Inspector Love that opened. Yeah, it was not Green Apple, I believe. I, it was a long time ago. <laughs> 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 you know? yeah. Um, Green Apple Quick Step released two albums from 93 to 98, Wonderful Virus and Reloaded, and one unreleased yeah. album, What New Disaster, is that correct? That, that is correct, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, what, with that being said, Wonderful Virus is my favorite album from you guys. Uh, Dirty Water wow. Ocean is obviously yeah. my favorite track. Oh, Just yeah. love that track. Great, uh, can great. You, can you talk a little bit more about the uh, writing mm-hmm. and recording process for uh, Wonderful Virus? The first one was just like, we got signed a medicine record. Yeah. And we didn't really know what we were doing. <laughs> we, so we just, just did it. You know, I, I don't really even remember much about it. I just know it was fun. Oh, so cool. Well, yeah. Then you went to <laughs> re- reload it and uh, Stone Gossard was the producer. I think you guys recorded in his home studio. Yeah, we did a couple tracks. Uh, we, I know we did that first track hotel wisconsin at his house um and then we went to reciprocal which was where nirvana recorded bleach and now it's owned by uh the, the singer for um God. can't for cutie. I know you gotta you gotta help me out. I'm old here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm well, trying my best. I guess I want to know more about the new disaster. What what I guess what happened there? Why why, why was it shelved? Oh, well, I think that was a time in the '90s, late '90s, later '90s, where if you as a band didn't get um, big success. We had small success, but if you weren't climbing the ladder and the numbers weren't happening, they would shelve you. Yeah. That is what they called it. And uh, that's what happened to us. It's a pretty cool record. Um, actually, Josh Freeze played drums on a few tracks on that one. He, he's in uh, Devo and a couple other bands. Yeah. He's in the Vandals, correct? Vandals, he plays with Sting. I think he plays with everyone, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he's a funny guy. He's a really cool guy. Any, any chance we'll ever see it be released? No, hmm. it won't. I tried. We don't own it. Oh, okay. It, it's, it's, it's like in Warner Brothers' basement. <laughs> and the people that work there now are like 20-year-olds. They have no idea. And they... They own it, so it's pitfalls of playing music in the nineties. You know, when they shelve an album like that, when when an album gets unreleased, and we hear yeah. this happening happening frequently, especially back in the eighties and nineties um, with the different artists. Yeah. Um, I guess the process of you know how do they decide in, and how do they inform you that this album that you put all this work into is never going to see the light of day? How did it work for you guys? How how did this happen? Can you kind of take us back? Uh, I, I don't know the politics of how those big companies work, but I think it's all numbers. And if you're not seeing the right numbers, I, I know one thing that this is ridiculous. Um, we did a song called Kid for I Know What You Did Last Summer yeah. soundtrack. 
And that was on a show with Carson Daly on MTV that was, I, I, I don't know, like it lasted two months. But we happened to be on that. <laughs> and it was called Smash or Trash. And it got trashed. I remember that. Oh, yeah. It, you do not. Yeah. So that happened. I think that was kind of why that happened. It was just the way it was back then. So... You know, I don't know why. <laughs> and it, it, I remember that show because, you know, it, you, you saw the Smasher trash, and that was detrimental to artists. Yeah. You know, MTV had too yeah. much, con way too much control, don't you think? I, I think it was horrible for us. And you shouldn't judge music like that, I would hope. And I haven't seen it since. And it lasted like two months, and we happened to be in that oh, window. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize that. <laughs> so, yeah, how horrible, <laughs> Jeff? You got the next question? Well, yeah. So, you, so the, you know that leads into the soundtracks. Um, I was a big fan of soundtracks in the '90s. Um, you were on uh, with yeah. Mike McCready and um, Marianne. You were on the Ten Thousand Gold Chain uh, "Oh Sweet Nothing" cover. Uh, can you talk about? Was, was, yeah, yeah, that was cool. I, I don't really know how that came about it might have been a pearl jam like rejection no, uh, yeah. like we're not going to do it but mike was like hey ty do you want to do it i was like yeah let's give it a shot so i think that's where that came from yeah um in 2007 ish uh you formed the band mass sugar it's been referred to as a part acoustic part indie rock part jam band um what happened to mass sugar that was a weird time. I, I have you heard that? I mean, can you get that? No, I, I that was uh, one of those kind of mysterious things that I read about, but I couldn't find any music to it. Yeah, exactly. But there was no. I have it, but I should put that out. Yeah, yeah. Can you? Can that's you... that's it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's good, good record. But I mean, yeah, I didn't put it out. Any any stories about origins of the band or how it all came about? Mm, no, <laughs> unfortunately, you're I killing me, man. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I wish I had some juicy stuff to say about it, but it was a short-lived band, and uh, I should put it out there. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, is there is there a, have you had any offers from any of the the smaller labels to put that album out? No, bummer. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anybody knew about it. So. <laughs> well, you also had a four-song EP with uh, um, Inspector Love and the Ride Me's. Uh, did, did, will that ever see uh, you know a bigger release? That was a forty-five. That okay. We did on Aurora Records. Um, that was the first thing I ever put out. And uh, Steve Ross and uh, Dan Kempthorne, who were in you know. Green Apple, they played on that. Uh, Tacoma Band, a lot of fun. Young, 18, I think, years old. I'm 51 now, so <laughs> it's a long time ago. <laughs> hey, you're our age. Yeah, I know. Um, I also saw I, I saw a video today I, I was watching. It was from, the, was it the Hula Bees? The song was called uh, Leaning Back. Yeah, Hula Bees. Yeah, that's with Steve Ross. Yeah, and, uh, Cole Barrett Peterson. Jones. Barrett Jones uh, produced the f first um, Foo Fighters stuff. Oh, okay. Barrett did, yeah. He plays keys in the band and sings, too. He's really good. Yeah. You can find out more about the Hula Bees on their Facebook page, or they have several songs to download on the Hula Bees Bandcamp page. Well, let's change gears on you here. Uh, yourself and uh, Kevin Guess established the band Calm Down Juanita. Uh, the, band, yeah. the, the band released the seven-song EP in 1998 and then followed by a full-length album, Undertown, in 2002. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the band? That was kind of when Pro Tools was starting. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, maybe before even. It was interesting. Um, God, Skerek was... He he did some John Doe, yes from X yes he sang on a song with me that was horribly recorded, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was side project one hundred percent yeah it was cool though yeah 
Yeah, I bought that yeah. uh, the, the seven song EP when it first came out, but I actually I didn't know that there was a full length. So there's also uh, Undertown. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with that being said, uh, Kevin Guess, uh, best known for the drummer of Camper Van Beethoven, I guess how did yeah. how did you and Kevin get together and collaborate on this project? Uh, let's see, um, I moved into a house with him and Steve Wilmans, uh, and that's the way it happened, and we did it there at the house um, over you know a period of four or five months just living there mm-hmm. yeah yeah fair enough man uh right, i'm gonna try this i'm gonna try this next one i'm a big fan of uh sean smith um mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uh I, I think he's very underrated i mean i know he's gone now we won't get into that but yeah um yeah, yeah. but i think he was a very underrated singer and and uh and and not everybody knows about him from the seattle scene uh you wrote uh or co-wrote leaving california a song for the shield of thorns album is that correct I did. Well, I wrote the uh, the guitar part, and Sean wrote the melody and the words. Um, one night in Ballard basement studio, uh, a guy gave me a computer, and he said, "Hey, there's this is called Pro Tools. This was the first one." <laughs> and me and Sean just sat down there and just like eked out on like, wow we can do this at our house. <laughs> um, and that song came about uh, uh, just me and him recording it. He re-recorded it really great, but the demo, I don't know where it is, probably gone, but yeah. um, that's how that came about. And that was in the Sopranos, which was really cool. Like yeah. the ending. Yeah. So very grateful. And he was a mentor to me. He was a roommate and uh, yeah absolutely yeah we miss them um novatone that's a band i think in 2000 was that 2005 uh had dave cruzen from pearl jam and or formerly and uh i think sean also contributed to that i i was lead vocals yeah yeah how did uh you and uh, dave cruzen get together and collaborate on this project oh man i've just been friends with dave for forever he's a gig harbor guy tacoma guy um just he's the guy i would call and i still will you know yeah he's a he's just greatest person and just so talented um yeah 959 novatone yeah amazing dude oh so cool um i have one last question i guess this is a generic question that i ask most of all of our artists is the mystery of rock, yeah. the mystery of rock and roll, uh, the dawning of the internet and social media has kind of taken away from the mystery of rock and roll bands like Zeppelin and kiss and Sabbath. And we could just go on forever. Had that mystique, had the mystery to them. And now the mystery is kind of gone with the dawning of the internet, the dawning of social media. Um, as you, as an established artist as yourself, uh, what do you prefer the mystery of rock and roll? Or do you like the accessibility that the, uh, internet and social media give us Uh, that's a good question um i was lucky to be in a place in seattle at the time and no internet (laughs) no phones Mm -hmm. and sneak into clubs and watch mother love bone play yeah amazing um but i think kids are going to figure out how to make it personal again just cannot be you know that way they're gonna figure it out you know they i think they are right now you know so i wouldn't worry about it you know i think the mystery is gonna be there i've been listening to a guy little peep i know he's gone but i do like that that's kind of what i've been listening to so i'm excited about the future um, I guess the uh, to kind of piggyback off of that question is, you know, as we see, you know, rock and roll uh, not being um, at the forefront of the popular culture, pop pop culture, uh, any longer. Uh, do you ever see yourself as a as a musician looking down the line to see, hey, rock and roll back to being the forefront of pop culture? Not really. 
I, I don't, I, you know, I'm past my prime. You know, I'm, I'm just going to be the old guy with a beard and do my songs <laughs> yeah. and my paintings. And that is kind of okay with me. You know, it's, I, I don't have a problem with that at all. And co- collaborate with people. I just produced a a record, which is really cool. <clears throat> um, but next time we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah. Fair well, well, a lot of artists are doing singles at a time or or small EPs. And uh, you, you said you just had a a, a five song um, EP come out. But what? Uh, wh- no, it was a female artist, Geneva Butler. She's really good um and i produced that record oh okay it's not out yet but it's and it i you know i sang a very little on it she did amazing you oh know, cool i can't wait for people to hear, hear that you know for sure well oh, very cool do you, do you have plans to do a full length someday or will you continue to do singles and ep who uh you it fires yeah it's coming out okay very cool all right, man. Well, um, we are kind of out of our allotted time. Um, is there anything that we did not cover tonight that you would like to plug or promote? No. Um, Jeff, the editing wizard over here, he'll uh, get it all prepared and he'll get it all chopped up yeah. and, and what yeah. have you with the edited yeah. edited link. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, you guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. All right. We'll be back all in right, touch guys. with you in about. Have a good night. Yeah. We'll be, be safe. Back. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Everybody
Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day, all with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts.